Hi, I am Karthik and this tutorial is about introducing an agile tool Axosoft on time. In this tutorial, I'll be giving a brief example on how to create a scrum project and set up a working environment. When we talk about scrum methodologies, some of the things we need to we need to use and manage are user stories, product backlogs, releases and sprints, members and teams, roles and workflows, and then burn downs. I will show how Axosoft is effective in providing all these tools for implementing Agile Scrum methodologies. Right now I am logged in as an administrator. This is the main page of the Axosoft. We see that there are three mm, there are three main panels here. Organized panel which has all projects, all releases, all users, all teams and all customers listed. And then we have the main workspace planners where the items will be displayed. And then there is a details panel which gives the brief synopsis of each and every selected item in the main workspace. In Scrum, features are written in the form of user stories. These are basically like saying, as a role, I want this benefit. So, for this tutorial, I'll be using the scenarios in creating a website called Schedule Maker. I have jotted down some of the user stories in creating this website. They are, for example, student login. A student of FIU enters the username and password and then presses the button login to access the system. Here the role is student of FIU and the benefit is accessing the system. And then the next one, student logout. An authenticated student of FIU presses the logout button to close the session. Here the role is authenticated student of FIU and the benefit is closing the session. In the similar way, I have some user stories here which I will be entering into the system. To create a new project, we will click on add under projects here. Here we, list, we say the project name. Here we can see that we have three user story workflow, Scrum, Waterfall and Kanban and inherited Scrum. Inherited is nothing but it means it's the default one. We selected it and then in this schedule maker folder we'll be adding the user stories by pressing on add here and the user story and then in in access of on time the time is taken as a measure in calculating and forecasting the com project completion which we will see through the burn down charts so it is important to give the original estimate of this user story so how much time will it take to develop this user story well, let's say eight hours for this one and then we'll save we have created a user story here as you can see and then in this we can create a user story in and in another method by using the keyboard shortcuts if we press C we create a new item and if we press N and S we create a new sub item Sub items are used when the user story is quite big and it cannot be covered in one day. But first, let's populate this list. These are enough for one scrum. And then, as you can see, for this user story, for this user story, student logs into their account, enters the courses they would like to register, and the system analyzes the best possible schedule. It is a quite big user story that is 16 hours that is more than one day we can then we'll divide it into subtask for subtask if you see the shortcut that is ns and the subtask would be uh, and then This would be the subtask. This subtask uh, shouldn't uh, shouldn't necessar necessarily be the same as user story. It can be related to the developer. So the collection of these user stories is called product backlog. Now that uh, it is quite populated, we can see it 
all the, it in the card view also all right we are done with users creating the user stories and product backlog now we have to create release and sprint to create a release you click on add button here select the say the release name schedule maker release here we cannot specify the capacity capacity means how till how much level can the workers work on this project on this duration that we don't know yet okay let the release be let's say two months and save it we select all the user stories and drag it down to the current release and in the current release we'll again create a new version version 1.0 here also we cannot specify the capacity because we don't know how much the team can handle again now let the version 1 be for one month save in the same way in the this is the release backlog and we'll select some of it and we'll put it in this first version and this would be the version backlog here we will add a sprint sprint 1 uh, here again the capacity we don't know that the sprint 1 can be 2 weeks from now 2 weeks save we have selected this version we will select what goes into the sprint drag and drop and this would be the sprint backlog so we have created a sprint let's go to let, we will add another sprint sprint 2 here again we don't know the capacity we have ended the first sprint at 8th and we will end the next sprint when the release is made that would be sprint 2 let's add the remaining of the version in sprint 2 this way we have covered all the user stories for this version all right now that we have made that what is the next one we have to make members and teams to handle the development all right now we need people to develop the software right now we only have administrator but we need different people with individual roles we will add users by clicking on the add button and here okay let the first user be myself and here the we have to enter the security role we have different security roles here administrator project project manager developer tester support engineer scrum master product owner testing project testers all right here uh, I am selecting developer and tester we can select multiple multiple roles and when we select more than one role all the things a developer can do and all the things a tester can do will be available for me to do and I'll save the user a user is created now we have to assign task for this user I will assign some of the tasks just drag and drop to the user to assign the task okay now we need other users also I have added another user as a developer and a tester and then we need a scrum master who oversees project and make sure every every member has all the tools needed and then we need a product owner who oversees which story makes into the product backlog so we assigned all the roles here as you can see now I will assign the remaining user stories to the other developer just drag and drop now as you can see here here in assign to we can see that the all the user stories are assigned to someone in this case we are assuming that uh, the user stories are assigned to the appropriate developers as per the request when the for when forming the user story list when we are entering it 
as a list and the administrator has taken the task of assigning them as given by the user as given by the developers now we create teams by clicking on add but add team button here the name of the team and here we can add the team members uh, the team members are administrator all the all the members we have right now but when we have more than one scrum master more than one de developer it will be easy to segregate now I have removed one developer from this team there is only one developer so when I click on this team we only get what tasks are assigned to these team members only it is easy to manage multiple teams this way now that we assigned members and teams we'll see how we can assign custom roles and custom workflows so that we can follow the agile principle we need for example take this uh, workflow here as you can see from new request the product owner will either approve or reject the re reject the user story when approved it goes into in progress by the developer then from in progress it will go to testing by developer and then the testing can be rejected or come approved when it is approved it goes to completed initially access of doesn't provide this kind of infrastructure infrastructure we need to create it by ourselves by customizing our workflows to customize a workflow we go to workflow here manage workflows here we see three workflows here we go to scrum in scrum we can rename edit or delete a workflow and create a new workflow Alright, I'm only going to edit the current workflow by going to the work workflow step. We can add a new workflow step, but we'll go and uh, edit the current workflow step. Here, allowed next step. It can only go to approved and rejected. And approved, it goes by product owner. Rejected, it goes by product owner. I've already edited this workflow steps so that it acts as I shown in that workflow diagram. We have other options here, step options. That means when we come when we come to this workflow step, what will happen? Status will become open. For example, when we go to complete a state, status will become closed because it is already completed, and remaining estimate becomes zero because there's not much, no more work to be done in this step. That's how it is. Now we have seen how we can how we can edit a workflow now we will see how we can edit add or remove a security role to add or remove a security role we'll go to tools people security roles here we see all the security roles and edit option for example what uh, when we go to edit option for developer as you can see what are the privileges the developer cannot add projects, cannot edit projects, cannot delete projects. He can only edit project assignments, something like that. Only custom privileges. And we can add role, which I have done already done here. Testing project testers, which is created by me. With this, we can make our users act as we want. Now when we click on add, what we see, this is called fields. These fields can also be customized. We go to tools again. Tools are in fields. We see custom fields, field templates. Go to custom fields. We can add a new field. For example, date received. It's a date which I have added. In the same way, when we for every for every workflow step, we can make sure we can make that when the user comes to this step he will give us the appropriate information which will prove very useful okay now let's see what happens to the user story in this workflow so the administrator doesn't have privileges to make it move from new request so let's log out of administrator Right now I have logged in as a product owner. The product owner's task is to study the user stories and see which ones goes to approve and which ones goes to re rejected. Note that this, this is only for the first sprint. After the product owner approved, the user, now I am logged in as a user, the user can move from up to approved to in progress. While in progress, he has to edit the workflow, work log. 
here he can see how many hours he's worked here let's say it is one hour and save it he has worked for six hours and then the next task goes to progress and this one also he will add a work log one hour it can be billable or non billable save now after going to in progress it goes to testing while in testing here we assume that the developer is also a tester he tests it after testing he will add to the work log again the remaining two hours two hours save and here also add work log the remaining two hours after it it goes to completed for example this user story is did not pass the test that means it goes to rejected which is also possible but again backtracking is not possible by the user when it once it is completed and he cannot change what the other user can do he doesn't have the privileges he can only see what he can what he is allowed to see all right now we have come on, come to the last part of our tutorial burn down chart the burn down chart provides a day to day measure for amount of work being done in a given sprint or a release to view a burn down chart for the current sprint click on the appropriate sprint here it is sprint 1 and go to dashboard and here we can add different types of gadgets i have already added all the gadgets i wanted to add for show purposes i will add a burn down chart here we we have to select the appropriate release that is sprint 1 and save we'll get the uh, due date and the start date and every other gadget here since it was only one day it uh, it only started today we cannot get the current velocity and the projected shift date but as time goes on and work log is updated by the users daily it will look more like a burn down chart and other gadgets also will be more useful this is an example of a burn down charts and other gadgets from the internet as you can see the burn down chart as the time goes and as the work workload decreases it go, it tends to zero and it will gi give us a projected shift date as you can see the due date was december 19th and the projected shift date was december 18th and hence it is early and the work remaining is 44 hours the current velocity is 23.5 hours per day and the required velocity is 14.67 per hours per day that means the developers can take it easy for some time and then we have a backlog distribution pie chart where we will see all that the product backlog divided into different sprints and then we see a gadget showing user workload chart as the number of hours of work assigned to each user and then we see items by project for every project how many of items that is how many user stories are assigned and then the projected shift date this concludes my tutorial thank you for watching this tutorial and hope it is helpful cheers